What's good guys, welcome to my channel where I help you love the scriptures and to reform to the word of God. And today I really wanna talk about something that I feel like I'm really burdened to talk about that God really has placed on my heart. And as you guys can see in the title, it's about unity in the body of Christ. And we're living in a world where a lot of people are divided, especially in America politically, where one side tries to make the other side look like a big bad devil and they just have this hate and animosity towards each other. And this is something that as Christians, we should expect from people of the world. But one thing that bothers me is that that is creeping itself into the church. And this cannot be because as Christians and as brothers and sisters in Christ, we must be united. It's actually an imperative. We are commanded to be united and to love one another in the scriptures. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 12, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. So Jesus is commanding us to show the same kind of love that he shows us to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, we are supposed to love unbelievers. Of course, we are commanded to as well. But I, I would argue that there's something more important and something more beautiful when brothers and sisters in Christ are united and are loving each other. But now in the church, I see so many brothers and sisters dividing because they don't hold to the same ideologies or political views. And they, and they have different views on secondary issues in the scriptures. Secondary issues like eschatology. Secondary issues on how we take the sacraments. Secondary issues like that. When we should be uniting in the gospel, we can't be like the world who makes the other side look like the most evil person, who makes the other side look like the devil in the flesh. And that's what Democrats do to Republicans. And that's what Republicans do to Democrats. But we as Christians can't be doing this to each other. The Baptists can't say to the Presbyterian, oh, you guys are so evil because you guys don't agree with me on these secondary stuff. So let's get political. We have to stop calling our brothers and sisters in Christ who voted for Trump racist. And they don't care about black issues. And to the other side, we can't. We have to stop calling Biden, people who voted for Biden people who don't care about the unborn lives. That's just not true some of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time, that's not true. So we have to stop radicalizing each side and have civil conversation. The world can't have civil conversation, but we as brothers and sisters in Christ, we as the church of Jesus Christ should be able to have civil discussion. The things that we have to all agree on is the deity of Christ. Him dying as a substitutionary atonement, our sinfulness, the Trinity, justification by faith alone. Those are the things that we have to agree on. And if, if someone claims to be a brother or sister in Christ and they don't agree with these things, or they're a modalist, or they're a oneness, or they're a Unitarian, then we can divide in, in truth because we love the truth. We preach the gospel to them, but we do not claim them as a brother or sister in Christ because they do not believe in the essentials of the faith. But there are secondary things, like if you voted for Trump or if you voted for Biden, that we can't, we can't divide on. We can't. Because there are Christians who looked at Trump and they, they thought they were just going to, they can't morally vote for him. And I disagree with that, but I can see where they're coming from. Even though I think they're terribly wrong, in my opinion. But I'm not going to be like, you're not my brother anymore because of it. And the other way around, I'm trying not to cry because it's just so annoying to see brothers not having love for each other despite disagreement. Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for what? One another. Jesus said that the world will know that you are truly followers of me. Truly disciples, if you love one another. So how is the world going to distinguish whether we are true believers? Why Why would they even want to come to a church where they can't even love each other, where they can't even be united within themselves? Why? This is how the world may know that we are truly disciples of Christ, is if we have love for one another. And this is one thing we have to fight for, is unity. 
And of course, we unite in truth. And like I said, if someone denies the Trinity, if someone denies that Jesus died as a substitutionary atonement, if someone denies the deity of Christ, who someone who denies the Trinity, we cannot unite with them. They are not saved. They are not Christian. They are not, they're denying the essentials of the faith. But if we agree with all these essentials, we have to unite. We have to fight for unity. We need each other. Do you guys understand that we need each other for our own perseverance? For our personal perseverance, we need our brothers and sisters in Christ. The body of Christ is an instrument that God uses to keep each other in Christ. To keep each other persevering. Biblical support of this. The writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 and 13, Take care, brethren, that there not be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Verse 13. But encourage one another day after day as long as it is called today so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So he's telling us to encourage each other every single day. Why? So that we will not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. So he, he's telling us that we need each other to persevere. We need each other in this Christian life, in this Christian walk with Christ. We are a family. We have the same father. So why is it so hard for you to love each other? David said in Psalm 133 verse one, behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell in unity. How amazing it is, how beautiful it is how good it is and sweet it is for brothers to dwell in unity. Now let's, let's go back to what Jesus said in John 15, to love each other as I have loved you. And I, I brought it up for a little bit, but I want to go back to that because what does love look like? You, you Sammy, you're telling me to love, but what does that look like? But he said, as I have loved you, so you love. So let's look at how Christ loved us. That's the example. He laid his life down for us. He was patient with us. And he continues to be patient with us through our flaws, through our insecurities, through our just whole wretchedness. He continues to be patient with us. He continues to love us. He continues to intercede for us. He continues to uphold us. And that's the same kind of love he is commanding us to have for each other. A love that is patient with one another through disagreement, a love that, that can allow you to, to have civil conversation and not just regard as the other side as unsaved or as the other side as racist or as the other side as uneducated because they disagree. A love where you would be willing to lay your life down for them. That sounds so radical, but it's true. If we are really supposed to and going to follow what Jesus told us to do here, we have to be willing to lay our life down for our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is not the intensity of the love that we should have for each other. But do we really even have that nowadays? Do we even have that? I don't see it enough. I don't see it enough. It's a self-sacrificial love. A love that would allow you to lay down your own desires and your own interests for the interest of your brother and sister. Philippians chapter 2 talks about this. Look not to the, your own interest, but put your other's interest before your own. Self-sacrificial love. A, a, a love that allows you to serve others. And hear them out. Hear their pain and Listen to what they have to say. Stop jumping into conclusions. And this year has just revealed to the hearts of certain Christians. Truly revealed your hearts. Because the Christian would say, I'm voting for Trump. And you automatically had this thinking about them. And you already had these, all these assumptions in your mind about them. And the same thing goes for the other side. Someone said, I'm voting for Biden. And you, always, you automatically have this thinking about them. They don't care about babies. You all, like... We have to stop doing that. And I'm guilty of doing it as well. But we have to stop doing that. As someone who did support Trump, I always looked at my brothers and sisters who wanted to vote for Biden as these people who are just evil. They, they're, they're so desensitized. And I'm just starting to think more and more. And I'm just like, 
as I talk to these people more and more, I'm just like, this cannot be. This cannot be. Let's unite in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The message that brought us reconciliation to God. The power of God unto salvation for all who believe. Let's unite in that. Let's unite in the fact that one day because of this gospel and because of the power of God that worked in our lives, we will be able to spend an eternity with each other forever. Let's unite in that. Let's find common ground in that. And though we may have sharp disagreements, we can still unite in that. Let's love one another. Let's unite because we have a mission. We have a united goal to see people come to the kingdom of God, to see people be saved. And we cannot allow our differences in politics to stop us from accomplishing that goal. We can't. We can't. We can't. We're doing the disservice to people. We're doing the disservice to unbelievers when we allow for secondary things to divide us. If we truly say we love people and love unbelievers, we must first unite with each other because the unbelievers are looking at us. They're looking at us, man. We are the reflection of Christ on the earth. And when they look at us nowadays, I feel like they just leave gaining a terrible perspective on who Christ is. And yes, I know we're flawed. We are flawed. But I don't see anyone trying to fight for unity. It's just a couple of people. People who are trying to literally lay everything down to fight for unity, to love and actively love each other. Like I said, one, we need each other. And two, the outside world's looking at us. So make your decisions wisely. And though I disagree with a lot of my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially when it comes to politics, and when it comes to things of the scriptures as well, secondary issues like eschatology, um, I'm a Calvinist, so I, I I disagree with my brothers about that a lot, but I can unite with them in the fact that we are going to be with each other forever. And that we all know the gospel message that brought us reconciliation to God. So let's unite in that. I love you guys. Hit the subscribe button and hit the like button to be notified every time I post another video. I love you guys.